Hello and welcome to Retech and today we're going to look at MIDI again. MIDI on a completely different system. This time it's going to be the Commodore Amiga and the Commodore Amiga seems to have been left out in terms of MIDI um, because the Atari ST kind of stole the thunder. It stole most of what people thought was a good MIDI machine and because of that, because of its built-in ports, its built-in MIDI hardware, it tended to be the go-to machine for MIDI sequencing and it was very popular. It was used throughout the 19, late 1980s, early 1990s and a lot of current artists basically cut their teeth on the Atari ST. So for that reason the Amiga tended to get left out and um, it wasn't because it wasn't capable, it was because it didn't have the built-in hardware. So this was kind of addressed firm to a certain extent through third-party hardware and one of these third-party hardware manufacturers was the producers of the Sequencer One Plus. And it wasn't just a piece of software, it was an actual hardware MIDI interface that plugged into the serial port of the Commodore Amiga. And it works on the Amiga 5, 5 Plus, 600, and um, I haven't tested it on the 12, but I'm sure it shouldn't cause any problems on the Amiga 1200 either. So we're going to have a quick look at the hardware and how it interacts with the machine. But this is going to be split up into two parts because the, the hardware side of it is probably going to take up a little bit of time trying to explain the differences between the Amiga and the Atari ST and also what this hardware add-on can and can't do and also what the basics of the sequencer are on this machine and then we'll go into creating some music with this setup and then compare it with the Atari ST and that will almost certainly be in part two. So before we start the first thing we're going to look at is how the Commodore Amiga 600 in the background here interact with a keyboard and what I've done is I've got a setup from the sort of mid 1980s to sort of mid 1990s in forms of keyboards to give you an idea of what you would have had back then if you were doing this kind of thing on a on a computer whether it be the Atari ST or the Commodore Amiga or any other computer including the Commodore 64 as we've seen in the Messiah system in the previous episode but this machine or this adapter plugs into the serial port on the Commodore Amiga and this is how it works. So basically you get a script sheet with how to plug it into the back of your Amiga and as you can see it is literally a ribbon cable that plugs into the serial port. And one omission, which is probably why they gave us this little addition within the manual, was the, um, the orientation of the MIDI ports themselves because they're not marked on this particular item. So again, this is why this crib sheet was included within the manual as a, as a kind of an addition. So what you do have is MIDI out and MIDI in. And basically this one can support multiple MIDI instruments where the ST only has a MIDI out and a single MIDI in as well. So you kind of need a, a separate adapter to support multiple MIDI instruments where this one is kind of all combined which makes it a little easier if you want to add in lots of different tracks, lots of different instruments into one composition. Okay, so how this... Um 600 works with the MIDI master interface which is here and it's a quite a enclosed unit you have MIDI in and MIDI out and um, these have kindly been marked up by maybe the person who owned this before because of the lack of legends that were on the original casing and the way it works is you plug the cable into the serial port of your Amiga and then into the MIDI master unit itself. Now it's a self-contained unit so you don't need anything else to make this machine run apart from this sequence and software here. 
and it's on a single floppy and it's not that big it's quite you know it's quite a small program if you compare it to today's huge great doors that we have on modern machines but you know it does kind of most of what a modern door would do now once you've plugged it all together and you've ran the software which you can actually see part of it on the screen here you then have to plug in your MIDI keyboard and now this is a Yamaha PSR keyboard and it's a PSR 50 it's from the same era um, that the Amiga and the interface was designed and built and for that reason it fits really well and basically what you have is a couple of MIDI cables and these are the MIDI cables they're standard MIDI you've got MIDI out and MIDI in and I think if you followed my previous um, videos on MIDI it should be fairly straightforward as how to connect up this system but because you have multiple MIDI outs on here uh, you can use that same interface to control multiple devices so two keyboards three keyboards and so on or a drum machine and you know or whatever MIDI device you want to use can be kind of controlled by this this simple little innocuous box so the MIDI master system is fairly powerful now how it works is you have two cables generally and they are quite hefty MIDI cables it's not they're not as thin or as lightweight as modern USB cables and you have two five pin DINs on the end and basically all you need to do is connect your MIDI out from your keyboard to the MIDI in to the MIDI master and also the MIDI out from the MIDI master to the MIDI in on your keyboard so it's just basically crossing the cable so it's out to in and in to out and it's fairly straightforward now if we have a quick look at the way the Atari ST worked with its MIDI interface you'll see it's it's kind of very different okay so if I start off a track and record it what we're going to do is just going to start off you'll hear the metronome in the background just don't really need to take much notes of that because I'm not going to change it I'm just going to play something to show you how this actually works It seems to have moved on a generation on this one. It's more concise. It's a lot clearer to use. Um, and it's kind of more intuitive than maybe the original ST. But, you, but you're talking five, six, seven years prior to this actually even came out. And, you know, things do develop and things do get better that's not to say that the Atari ST version isn't any good because it is one of my favorite kind of MIDI tools and you can produce some great sounding compositions on it so if we get back to the um, Commodore Amiga here um, basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a very basic setup on this sequencer um, we're not going to go into all of the, the little nuances on how it works and you know what you can actually put together on this but it's more for the fact of how it's controlling this setup this keyboard here because as you can see on the screen the sequencer one plus is running and it's 1993 this was actually brought out and it was a good five to seven years later than what you'd find on an Atari ST on most Atari ST packages but they also did this version for the Atari ST as well so everything you see on here will also duplicate itself if you have an Atari ST the only thing that it won't do is allow the multiple outs on the MIDI ports directly from the ST because as I said before there's only a single MIDI out. Now if you look on the screen here you've, you'll see a fairly kind of standard setup in comparison to sort of modern machines but this is really the only the track editor so you've got basic controls such as record, rewind, fast forward, play and stop. You can also play around with your tempo and you can also put in a loop if you want to and you can put as many tracks as you really feel fit I mean most people are not going to do more than maybe three four five 
separate tracks um, but if we have a look at this one you can do 32 separate tracks to make your composition or 32 separate instruments to make your composition or track up so to be honest most people won't be using that amount most people will be using two three maybe four at the most so what I've done is I've literally set up two small test pieces and um, if I play it on this keyboard here which is kind of very late 1980s fair it's, it's quite a basic keyboard and it's not not the best sounding thing in the world but it will actually do what we need to do today and it gives you an idea of what you can do and you can put much more complicated and complex instruments on this system as you go further which we will do in part two of this video because this is just a general overview of what the Commodore MIG could do and then kind of gives you um, a different perspective on MIDI and it's not only the Atari ST that kind of ran away with it. Now if we start just um, a simple tune so okay and you can hear that it's being produced by the keyboard itself and the Amiga at this point is really not doing a lot okay all it's doing is if I do a key press it's registering it on this bar here which gives you an idea of what's going on with the instrument okay. so if you want to record a simple tune or a part of a bass line or whatever you want to do it's literally dropping to the sequencer based tracks here so all you need to do is drop the first one on record the track and then you can edit it from there on so the raw, raw recording is on here so for example I've just recorded a single track which is called beat it's just the background track now the second track if you want to add in anything extra um, you can just literally record it onto here and all you really do is you select the track you want to record on the little orange circle appears there to say it's going to record and again it's very very simple if you've just got the major record button and then you can record whatever you want so if I want to record a little bit of underlying tones on there And then you've got your second part of your composition recorded there and it's as simple as that you can skip through you can change your tempo and you can change your start position etc all on this system so if we play it now and we combine the two tracks Okay, and you may have noticed that your two tracks here correspond with the, the beats or the actual instrument that's being played here. So you, you've got an idea of how many tracks are playing. So if you add in a third track or a fourth track, they will also drop down into this area here. And the other good thing is you do have the addition of splitting it up into stereo left and right channels which if you look along here you've got left one two right one two etc so you can actually do that on here as well so you can add in a little bit of kind of stereoscopic kind of sounds if you're listening through headphones etc and one of the other things you can do is just alter the tempo without actually redoing any of your work so if you decide you need it really need to slow it down a bit you can very easily do that okay. 
by literally just putting in the tempo you want to use and it will play it at a completely different rate. Okay, and then you can just basically up the tempo as you feel like it. So if I put it back to the way it was originally played, and then we just play the sequence again. And you can see both the channels are doing their job. And again, because it's MIDI, if you wanted to change the actual voice or the instrument, you can actually do it on the keyboard. The simplest way of doing that is actually changing your keyboard voice. So, for example, if I want to take it to the electric piano, it'll probably sound a bit odd, but we'll give it a try. And there we have electric piano version. And you might kind of notice the, it's a kind of take on the early Tron kind of tune. If you if you were into Tron back in the day on the original 1980s movie. And this is roughly kind of my interpretation of it just to put something down for this track. So again, any instrument you want to use that your keyboard is capable of, you can just change. So harpsichord. And you get a completely different sound. So you get a completely different sound by just altering what your keyboard is capable of. And one of the good things about this system is you would run this through a small mixing desk. So, and then you would actually then record the output depending on whichever instrument that you wanted to choose to, you know, complete your sound. So it's a little bit similar to the way the modern doors work because I do use analog on modern doors and it works perfectly, but it's very similar principle. All the 600 is doing is sending the data to here. And if you've watched a previous video, it's basically seven bits at a time. So it's shoving down seven bits, which is MIDI, and it kind of sends it mostly on a 10-bit data packet each time. But that's all this is doing. It's sending the data to tell the keyboard to play whatever note that it was being asked to produce. The instrument of the voice is irrelevant. So what I would do on this is I would create something, the same on the ST and the same I've done for a lot of my end tracks on some of these videos is I create them on the keyboard or one of the keyboards. I would then add in separate tracks and then run it via analog because straight out to record on a PC. So it's literally sound out, sound in, record. It's not like a modern door on digitally done where you, you actually pick the notes out on the screen, you save it as a digital file. Um, so most of my stuff saved is either WAV files and so on um, because I prefer analog. I do like the conventional doors 
with so I'm basically laying it down digitally, recording it digitally, etc. But I do actually like sometimes the way certain analog instruments kind of sound. So that's where I'm coming from with this. And this software is very, very good. It's natural to use. It's more natural than on the Sonos on the ST, which took a little bit more of kind of thought behind it to try and get it to work properly. Once it does work properly, it's, it's fairly intuitive, but this is a lot more intuitive than I kind of expected, to be honest. Um, and on something like an Amiga 600 sat in the corner, pushed in the corner somewhere, just working away, doing its job. Um, it kind of makes sense because it's such a small, compact unit. It's an all in one unit. You can just connect up to a monitor and leave. And if you're into kind of old school recordings, even modern recordings, you know, where you want to actually literally play the tune rather than pick it out on screen and then you want to combine it together on a track editor and you just want to record it and play it back and then play around with the voices on your keyboards or the sounds on your drum machines and so on. This still makes sense and I'm kind of leaning towards this system rather than some of the um, more complex systems on the Atari ST. And I know you can get this software for the STs, which I would like to get a copy of and try out. But um, combined machines, there seems to be no real difference between the way the ST does its thing and the Amiga does its thing with something like the MIDI Master. And that was quite surprising because you know you, you kind of grow up with the generation of the Atari ST is the go-to MIDI machine and you grow up with the image of the ST being the go-to MIDI machine and for most part it was but the Amiga either the 5 or the 6 or the plus or even the 12 I know this will work on the 12 as well um, this kind of makes sense and there's not a lot to choose between them so what I'm going to do in the next episode is cover, literally cover, more complex recordings on using the 600. I'm going to put in a, a less of a basic keyboard and probably connect a drum machine, a second keyboard to it and so on. And then just make a track, put a track down and play it and see what this system can actually do. So I hope you've enjoyed this brief look at the Amiga 600 and MIDI and it's well worth it if you can get hold of one and use your Amiga for maybe one of your other passions okay so thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you'll subscribe and see me on part two and th thanks again thank you